So uh, I'm going to present my fellow um, London Women in Data Science Ambassador, Zaremba, and she are they going to talk? They're going to talk on statistical causality in multimodal systems. Uh, Zaremba uh, is now a lead data scientist in Hunter Labs Technologies and the post postdoctoral research in quantitative risk solutions. Um, Zaremba did the uh, PhD at UCL, and during their PhD, they developed a flexible framework for statistical causality in time series. So yes, uh, get ready for some technical talk. The, the current uh, academic research concentrates on developing the causal methodology further and also on applying this methodology to cryptocurrency data. Zaremba is passionate about science in general, and if you want to uh, learn uh, more about Zaremba, uh, on our website for Women Data Science London, uh, I had an interview with Zaremba. So, uh, there's more informal conversation with them. Uh, as a member of WIDS London, they aim to inspire and support people from underrepresented backgrounds. Uh, yes, Zaremba. Um, okay, so I ho hopefully everyone can hear me and I'm now sharing the screen. Um, can you see it? Yes. All right, um, so I no longer can see you, I can just... Um, see my screen. Um, well, thank you, Asiel, for, for, the, um, for the introduction. And um, well, first of all, um, thank you um, to the organizers for inviting me to the conference. Um, well, actually, I'm one of the organizers um, still. Um, I'm very, very happy to, to be here. Um, yes, and uh, today I'll be talking about my, my research about um, statistical causality in multimodal systems. Um, so first of all, my name is Zaremba. Um, I'm a lead data scientist in uh, Hunter Labs Technologies. Um, today, I'll be talking about my, my research um, that, um, was most, that was mostly um, part of my um, PhD research at uh, UCL. Uh, and also, I'll, I'll be um, talking about uh, some of my um, recent collaborations with the colleagues from uh, Harriet Watt University, um, Professor Dr. Gareth Peters and uh, Yanis Chokadakis. Um, what I'll be talking about, there's actually a couple of components. So first, I will introduce everything um, so that you have a picture. The main theme is, uh, as I mentioned, statistical causality. And this is only one of the conceptual representations of causality based on predictive models. Um, I will be talking about uh, modeling and testing. So um, hypothesis of lack of causality, how does that relate to model selection and um, structure, structural properties? Um, the main testing framework um, uses generalized likelihood ratio test. Um, so I will mention, I will introduce that. Um, the models um, that are most important part here um, is the Gaussian process framework. Um, and um, finally, this, this framework allows testing for um, testing in, in, in multimodal systems. Um, so I will give an example of um, application of that framework to, um, to, uh, to analyzing um, causality between cryptocurrency and sentiment index. Um, so first of all, what is statistical causality? Um, as I mentioned, is on, it is only one of um, many um, causal, uh, many conceptual representations of causality, which is important to mention because um, there are many and each of them actually models a different thing. Um, statistical causality is based on, um, on, uh, on predictive models. Um, in 1956, um, Wiener 
um, suggested or, or, or um, introduced the idea that causality can be interpreted in terms of um, in terms of improvement of prediction. In 1960s, um, Granger has um, proposed a testable form for vector autoregressive models. Um, and after that, that has often been called Granger causality. Um, so let's say that we have three um, real value time series um, and we're, we're interested in, in analyzing um, causal relationship between X, T and Y, T, and we might have Z, T as side information. Um, when we talk about the statistical causality here, um, the hypothesis that we that we analyze is of um, equality or lack of equality of the distribution of um, white T conditioned on its own past, and we either include past of um, X T or not. If there is an improvement, then we can interpret that as um, as a causal effect. What is important here is um, that there is a that there is a notion of time. Um, we we include past of um, of x x t. Um, and what is also important is that this concept is basically um, comparison of two models. Um, when we look at um, testing, um, this is. Uh, this can be seen as, as uh, model selection. Um, and uh, for that, we, we, we have to choose uh, the, the statistical test and also what is the predictive model, what is the model that we want to use here. So the criteria, criteria for testing procedure um, that were the main criteria for me when I was looking, uh, when I was developing the framework, um, was of course it was that I want to be able to have a compound test. Um, I want to have a powerful test, and I want to know um, asymptotic asymptotic properties. Um, and um, I have chosen um, generalized likelihood ratio test. Um, in terms of the model, um, I wanted something that is flexible, um, that has ease of model calibration. Um, that allows easy formulation of the test statistic, um, allows incorporating of site information, higher dim dimensionality, and um, different model structures. Um, Gaussian processes um, are very, very flexible and, um, and basically help uh, and, and basically meet those criteria. Um, three words about generalized likelihood ratio test. Um, basically, we are comparing the likelihoods of the two models, um, and uh, those models are, are parametric models, um, and we test for the parameters belonging to a smaller or a bigger set. Um, the test statistic is defined in terms of um, likelihoods, in terms of um, maximizing the, the, the likelihoods. Um, and what is so important here is that we have, um, we are assuming that we're using nested models. Um, and this will be, um, this will be very crucial um, when, uh, when formulating, formulating the models and formulating the test. Um, and very, very quickly, why um, GLRT is um, is so useful is so important is that um, we we know what is the asymptotical um, distribution under the null. Um, now um, GPs the very uh, very popular definition by Rasmussen and Williams is that um, Gaussian process is a collection of um, random variables any number of which have a during distribution. Um, so basically, a Gaussian process can be seen as um, generalization of, of multivariate um, Gaussian, um, Gaussian variables. 
Um, these, however, are um, stochastic processes. So um, Gaussian, Gaussian process is uh, completely specified by the mean function and covariance function, just as the multivariate, multivariate Gaussian distribution is specified by, by mean and by covariance. Um, and the mean function and covariance function, um, these will be one of the most um, important elements later on because um, testing, uh, testing um, for causality, testing for the difference between the, the two models, we will basically be testing for hyperparameters hyper connected to mean and covariance function. Um, now we were talking about, about um, the time series. So if we want to represent um, the time series white T as a, as a GP um, with additive, um, additive noise, um, we basically can, um, can use the, um, can introduce the, the, the notation on the concept of um, state variable. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm writing um, in this more general form because I will want to um, compare two um, to models. Um, so the notation here is um, uh, for mean, mean function and covariance function um, defined with, with I where I is um, one of the two different models um, that I will introduce, um, introduce in a moment. Um, so let's just go back um, for a minute to the definition of causality when we were talking about um, causality or lack of causality as um, equivalence of the two distribution. Um, so we can look at that, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of the um, equivalence of, of distribution or equivalence of the models. So if we talk about Gaussian processes with the state space variable xt, then the main distinguishing or main way of distinguishing between the two models for for yt is in the um, in the state variable. So still, um, I can I can use um, I, I'm using the notation uh, from from before yt as a Gaussian process um, with additive noise, um, and here when we when we define the test statistic um the test statistic to use the um glrt um generalized likelihood ratio test um we use the fact that um for gaussian processes likelihood is such a natural object um when we when we fit gaussian processes um, when we optimize, um, when we optimize the hyperparameters, um, likelihood is a natural um, thing to occur, which means that um, optimizing optimizing the hyperparameters for the model is um, which is done by um, by maximizing the the, the likelihood is basically um, the same thing as looking at those, um, those maximum likelihoods that are um, important for the generalized likelihood ratio test. So um, the test statistic here is a comparison of the um, two likelihoods. Um, here I'm, I'm writing that in the matrix notation. Um, so the mean um, mean vectors mu b and y are the um, are based of based on the 
mean functions connected to model A and B, um, the ground matrices, the kernel matrices or covariance matrices, K, B and um, K, I are um, related to the um, covariance functions uh, um, that I have introduced earlier. And um, the most important part here is um, that we know the asymptotic distribution um, of the test statistic. Um, now, very quickly, what happens if we want to um, if we want to look at um, at maybe more complicated models, or we want we are interested in in um, analyzing the different modalities? So one 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 thing is that um, Gaussian processes are very often um, defined as as univariate um, uh, or as um, univariate output. Um, let me just very quickly. Um, here, when I was introducing um, the model for YT, um, that is very often seen as YT being univariate. Um, but if we want to if we want to model um, multivariate uh, data, then there are several several ways. Um, one is um, one is that we can build um, we can build a um, a model where we introduce. Um, where we introduce diff different modalities, like um, in in this in this um, diagram, x t and y t are the um, time series of interests that we were talking about before. F x and F y are the um, Gaussian processes that we were talking about before. Um, previously, we had the epsilon t, um, the additive Gaussian noise, um, and here. We can we can introduce a uh, common um, Gaussian noise, which means that we actually introduce um, introduce dependence. Um, but also um, f x can um, can be combined um, from different Gaussian processes, and those can be seen as different modalities. So um, there are um, there are different ways how we can look at um, building a, a multiple output um, system here. Um, in this case, in the case that I that I'm um, that I'll be mentioning in the um, in the applications for which I have one minute, so I'll hurry up. Um, We will be looking at um, three different modalities, and also we will be looking at um, common noise, um, which is introduced as a as a convolved Gaussian process. Um, and um, without going into many details, because I have one minute, um, the test statistic um, L x to y actually stays similar. It just has more components. Um, the the component for the common common white noise um, is different, and also if we have um, if we have some of Gaussian processes, these uh, these stays as as um, these are easily incorporated in in the um, likelihood fun function. Um, the the application that I wanted to to mention is um, something that I that I'm working on with um, Yanis Chalkadakis, um, Gareth Peters, um, and Mike Chandler, um, and the the abstract at the moment is is available at um, SSRN. Um, the title is Sentiment Driven Statistical Causality in Multimodal System. Um, we're looking at at um, Linear and nonlinear causal, causal effects, um, and we're looking at um, at three modalities: um, cryptocurrency exchange rates, um, 
the um, news, uh, the sentiment index, which is based on news articles for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Tron and Ripple, um, and also um, hash rate, which is, um, which is a mining power uh, for Bitcoin blockchain. Um, Bitcoin uh, and other, other, other currencies, for most of the time, they are very strongly correlated. Um, they do, however, have um, some times where the cor correlation decouples. So one of the interesting questions that we had was, do we see that there is a strong um, effect um, of, of sentiment, um, especially during that time when the um, correlation between the different um, currencies um, decouples? And also um, uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, they strongly rely on, on technology. Um, so we're also interested in what are the relationships um, if we look at the, the hash rate or the, the sort of technological price of mining um, Bitcoin. Um, when we were looking at the different uh, different sentiment indices, um, we saw that we, we basically were able to um, strongly reject the, um, the hypothesis of lack of causality um, through go big, bigger part of the history that, that we analyzed from, from uh, May 2018 to, to January 2020. So this, um, those those figures they represent um, how strongly we reject the hypothesis of lack of causality. Um, the blue line um, the blue line represents um, our methodology. Uh, on the left, we look at causality from the direction Bitcoin to to um, sentiment index. On the right, sentiment index to Bitcoin. And we're also comparing it to um, using a different uh, methodology, transfer entropy. Um, and we see that as there's especially um, strong relationship or the direction from sentiment to, to Bitcoin. And comparing that to the, um, to the history of, it, of Bitcoin and also the coupling, the coupling between different currencies we see that there are some, um, some periods when um, people were less interested in Bitcoin and, um, and moved to other, um, to other um, cryptocurrencies for a shorter period of time. Um, and that um, we, um, we also interpret that in terms of the, the effect of, of sentiment. Um, in the second set of uh, in the second set of um, figures, we we'll look at uh, we, we see that the um, um, that the technology hash rate um, does not have a strong effect on sentiment, which is basically um, what we expect. Um, however, there is a strong um, relationship in the other direction, um, which is also as we expect, because um, if, uh, if people expect that um, cryptocurrencies will be more desirable, then they're willing to, um, to, um, uh, to mine more of, uh, more of Bitcoin, um, which is which which drives so basically sentiment will drive in that case um, hash rate. Um, Sorry, Zaremba, I just wanted to ask you that one question from the chat before you. Ah, yes, you almost yes, I think that I've exhausted all of the time. Uh, yeah. So if we don't have time, then um, you you might want to answer it in the chat. But the question is, can we take uh, GLRT equivalent to base fa factor for time series models? And is there any library for this, for, for GLRT analysis that you mentioned? 
in R or Python? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I've been I've been skimming over over quite a few um, quite a few areas, but basically um, GLRT is uh, is the uniformly most powerful um, test for comparing model fit, um, which means uh, which is which is the criterion why why we're using that. Um, we know the um, asymptotic um, asymptotic uh, behavior, um, and in that in that sense, uh, this is basically quite quite unique test, um, and it um, it is very suitable for for Gaussian processes. Um, I'm looking at the at the question. Did I answer it fully? Was there another part of the question? Um, I think that um, the question is in the chat. If, if you want, you can continue answering because I think everyone is now uh, urgent to go for lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, thank you, Zarimba. It was um, a very technical talk. I was mesmerized with all the graphs and formulas. <laughs> and uh, I think everyone found it uh, fascinating that these kind of uh, complicated things are behind them. Uh, uh, new models in cryptocurrency. Uh, it's really good to know that we can do it. We can model it and we can do uh, predictive models. 